welcome to the next conservation games. As it stands right now, the leopards and buffaloes are scraping for that uh, third and fourth position. So without further ado, um, ex-teammate, uh, ex-international cricketer, looking most dapper this evening in his suit. I doubt that it's a full suit, but we'll have to see a little bit later. Uh, he's from Team Buffaloes. Uh, his uh, brother is, I think, captain of the elephants. So no, no love lost there. I'd like to welcome uh, Gavin Rennie. Hello, Gav. How are you? Hey, Dirk. Thank you very much. Um, I actually quite like being called an athlete. That was quite a compliment. Um, I, I'm sure I said ex-athlete, so I'm sure I cleared that up very quickly. Ex-athlete. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah, that's more accurate, actually. Um, maybe he has been. Well, I will tell you that tonight, you better have your running shoes on, because uh, in what you and I used to class as an athlete, compared to the gentleman you're up against, uh, totally different. Uh, he's representing the Leopards today, and I think he's all the way in California. So as Gavin and I sit here in Zimbabwe, in a bit of cold weather, in the evening, the sun's gone down. I think uh, our, buffer, our Leopards gentleman, rather, has only just woken up. And I'd like to uh, welcome to the show and Gorni Makusha. And Gorni, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Nice to have you on the show. Um, correct, it is in California where you are? Yes, I'm in uh, Davis, California. Uh, close, uh, close, to, almost in Sacramento, but close to San Francisco. Yeah. Okay, so I can tell you the one reason why Gavin Rennie is wearing a suit because that's their team yeah. kind of thing. But the other reason is because it's keeping him nice and warm. What's the weather like in California at the moment? It's actually we're getting close to summer, so uh, it, it's it's getting warm. It's getting really hot, close to the eight, high eighties, nineties. Uh, last week we had a couple of days over a hundred. Wow. Well, so tonight, can the leopards catch the buffaloes? Can they maul them this evening? As Ngoni Makusha, ex-Olympian, takes on Gavin Rennie, ex-cricketer from the buffaloes. Right. Well, let's see what you got, Ngoni. I'll ask an easy one. This this got to be easy. What is the long jump record I hold in Zimbabwe? Ah. Yo. Um, eight meters 40. Gavin Rennie, 8 meters, yeah. 40, spot on. I didn't even need to give you uh, a couple of centimeters either way. 8 meters, 40, do you reckon you would have jumped that? Um, maybe on a horse. Well, I, I was going to say to you that I jumped 8 meters, 40 in long jump, um, but that was form 1, form 2, form 3, all added together. <laughs> okay, so just, just to put it into perspective, if you jumped 8 meters, 40, and you broke the Zimbabwe record, what would the sort of, you were obviously still at university at that time, at college? Yes, I was in college, but uh, since I'm Zimbabwean, it doesn't matter uh, the where you are located. You but what, just, what, uh, would the, what would the college of record have been in that year? Would, could you remember? What would the record be? Were you close to that or did you beat it? No, I, I was the national champion. I was, I was the best long jumper that year. Wow. Well, well, like I said, three years for me to reach eight meter 40. I, I walk that far, I get tired. Right, Ngoni, you got another question for Gavin, please? So, um, okay, I took part in the 2007 All Africa Games. My first major uh, large event, we won a bronze in the four by one relay. Name one of the team members. Yeah, um, I think I can name I can name all three actually. Um, really? Wow. Gabriel Mumfure. Mumfure. Uh huh. Mumfure, yeah, Mumfure. Uh, Brian Zingai and wow. uh, Louis Ganda. Right, right on. Right. So, Gavin Rennie is going beyond the call of duty. We asked you to name one, you named all three. You seem to be like that student who wants to sit in the front of the class, Gavin. Um, uh, I, was, I was a student who sat at the back, and when they asked, can you name one person, I would have given one name only. I wouldn't even have given a surname. But you've gone the extra mile and given us all three plus surnames. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the surname of Gabriel is Umvumvuri. So you were slightly out there, but you got all three of them. So well done. An extra two points for you. I'm not getting you any more, Gavin. I'm not that lenient. Right. Off you go, Gavin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful, he, he, maybe he can hear us, eh? <laughs> Correct, so tell him, don't even try that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would try. 
anyway. Um, so in Gorni, um, I was very privileged and, and lucky enough to play test matches and one day for, for Zimbabwe in a, in a fairly short career of seven years. Um, how many test matches did I play for Zimbabwe? Oh, man. Do you want some help in money? Because I was reading on the, on, on the Wikipedia. I was reading on the Wikipedia. It's 20, 20, 23? Ah, Mokoro Koto 23 on the button. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. Very right, good. you have your second Thanks. question. Um, how do easy? Uh, easy. Uh, I, Easy, come on. Easy. Check that out, man. Easy. Okay, good. How many? No, in fact, let's go with this one. Which country did I make my test debut against in 1997? Uh, that, I don't think that one was on Wikipedia. So I'm, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and give you a little bit of help, Ngoni. Okay. Um, this country has two words. New Zealand. <laughs> Kevin's, <laughs> Kevin's nodding. Correct, it's New Zealand. Very good. Ah. So, I'm going to ask you your first question. And your first question is uh, in line with uh, Victoria Falls. Can you name the cataract that is up close to the Zimbabwe bank of the Victoria Falls? The cataract close to the Zimbabwe bank? Yes. Is it the Devil's, uh, is it the devil's Pool? I, I'm I'm gonna give it to you, Gav. You can tell him what it is. Devil's cataract. Correct. So it's devil's cataract. That's good enough for me. Uh, Gav, you, you've been in the um, uh, industry for a long time. If someone said devil's pool, would you have marked them wrong for that? I think I would have given them one mark for getting uh, one, one word right. Me. And Gorni, check what he's trying to tell me. He's trying to tell me that I'm being way too lenient, eh? Right, no, right. No, but that, that was that was very good actually because um yeah the devil's cataract um yeah it's it's a famous famous spot but so is the devil's pool actually um which is accessed from the Zambian side. Very right good. So this one might be a bit more difficult for you, but it sort of runs in line with what you do. What is the top speed uh that an elephant can run? I'll put an elephant at forty forty eight. 48. Yeah, just to be random, yeah. It's 40. Oh. Wow. Wow. Does that wow. ring a bell? No. But for, for yes. an hour that size, 40 kilometers an hour. Right. No, because I, I know my mom's totem is elephant. Um, okay. You know, yes. So, so I, I know elephants are, like they're, 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 they're quicker than, than humans to some, at, some, at some point. So I was trying to give them an, uh, like an upgrade there. So uh, I was too lenient, it seems like. Maybe it was an Goni Makusha kind of elephant as opposed to a Dirk Fodin and Gavin Rennie kind of elephant. Yeah, I'm, I'm always on the, on the fastest side. <laughs> um, right, Gav, here we go. The bat-eared fox is your favorite animal. They mainly eat insects, which they locate using sound. At the shoulder, they will stand around 30 centimeters high. How high is the ear alone? Eight centimeters, six point five centimeters, thirteen centimeters, or eighteen point five centimeters. So if you turn around and have a look at that fox behind you, Gav, is that eight, yeah. six point five, thirteen, or eighteen point five? Yeah. So if if they stand thirty three centimeters, I'd say it's close to a third of that. So I'd say thirteen centimeters. Again, you're taking this sit in front of the class a bit too seriously, Gavin. <laughs> you, you, if, if, I was, if I was your teacher, I would send you to the headmaster. <laughs> I was always at the back of the class and I was staring out the window at the cricket field. I don't think I, you know, Form <laughs> 2 was the best six years of my life. I don't think I passed one exam. Right, Gavin <laughs> Rennie, you are one from one on the conservation questions. Your second one, the minor pools in the north of Zimbabwe is your favorite park. There are four pools that make up the mana pool, the main pools of mana. What are they called? Yui. 
Um, that's a tough question. Um, four pools, and, and that's why it's mana. Mana is four and Shona. Um, <clears throat> long pool Correct. is one. Um, sure. Dirk, that's a tough question. I, Are you going to give me any help? Yes, okay, so I'll, I'll give you some help. Um, to be honest, two of them, I don't know. I've never heard of them. Um, but one of them was in the question. There are four pools that make up the main pools of mana. What are they called? So long pool okay. you've got. Yeah, main pool. Correct. Sure. No, sorry. Uh, no. So I'm, I'm going to give you... Yeah. I'm going to give you one point, Gav. Um, you got two, you more than, two more than I would have got. So uh, at the end of the conservation questions, uh, we are just over halfway. Gavin Rennie leads uh, Ngorni Makusha by one point, seven points to six. We're going to take a short break. Uh, don't go too far. There's lots left in this game. Our wildlife needs help. Tourism to Africa is at an all-time low. You can assist by liking and sharing the conservation games. You can contribute financially by hitting the donate button on the Zambezia.com website. Let's get together and back up the Frontline Conservation Team. Right, yeah. let's get into section three, gentlemen. Uh, it's time for the reverse questions. Gavin Rennie, you're up first to ask Ngoni. You have four questions there uh, about Ngoni. Uh, I need you to pick two for me, please. Ngoni, in, in May 2008, you first broke the Zimbabwe long jump all-time record with what length of jump? I think I jumped 816 in Tallahassee. That is correct. It was the first time you broke eight meters. Uh, uh -huh. That's the information I have. But before that jump of 816, do you know where you were jumping before that? Uh, I jumped maybe 790 indoors, 797. So that's, that, that jump is bigger than a batty at Fox's. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, way, way. Way, way bigger. And now I'm talking about the difference from before you crossed the eight meter barrier. Surely, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But surely when you sort of doing long jump, you can jump like eight, 12. Maybe you had a bit more energy. So you jumped eight, 14. How do you go from 790 to 816? It, 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 it depends. It depends with the day. Uh, you know, it's most of these things they happen, right? And you are not in control of every little inch that happens in the in, in the jump. But some days you are feeling well, and stars align, and you are jumping out of the pit before you know it. So, Gavin, Gavin will uh, attest to this. It's no different, Gav, when you, you walk to the crease and that first ball you face uh, it comes off the middle of the bat, and you think to yourself, "Wow, today, today, that, that feels really good." Uh, in Goni, yeah. was, was long jump the same? You, you sort of have a, a, a practice jump and you think to yourself, wow, um, t today might be that day. Actually, long jump was a bit different. Warm up, warm up can actually throw you off, uh, you know, because it's different from, from when you have to take the, proper, the, the, uh, the official jump. But when you take that first jump, you know, you know it's going to be a good day because usually for me, my first jump, was either really good or mediocre. So when I took uh, my first jump, I, I knew it was gonna be a really good day. When, if I'm over eight and the, the jump feels smooth, and so I, this, I knew it was gonna be. I, I know that 2008 was a long time ago. So 816, the first time you jumped over eight meters, what number jump was that? Can you remember? Maybe, I think that was the second jump actually of really? the day. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. well, a big, uh, a big difference from where you were jumping. Um, right, so Ngoni gets himself uh, two points. It moves him to eight. He now leads Gavin in the photo finish, eight points to seven. Obviously, Gavin still has his questions. Gav, you do, however, owe Ngoni one more. So his next question, please. Yeah, um, 
Nguni, I, I happened to watch this, uh, this YouTube clip um, of you receiving this award and I was absolutely impressed with how humble you were um, on the stage and the answers that you gave to the person who interviewed you. So yeah, a real role model, well done. Thank you. Uh, you received the, the Bauman Award in 2011. Who won this in 2010 and who won it in 2012? I think to the, on the main side in 2010, I think it was Eton Ashton. Okay. 2012 now. Oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm lost on this one. I don't think I can get I, I, like uh, Cameron Levens. Cameron Levens. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. That was totally. Do you know that uh, in Gorni, um, following the two gold medal victory, uh, in Gorni became one of only four. Now five athletes to win the double, which was the 100 meters and long jump at the NCAA championships. Okay, you tell us. Listen to this, Gavin. Yeah. Uh, Carl Lewis. Correct. Uh, Jaren Lawson. Yes, who I don't know. There was yeah, and, Jess, and Jesse Owens. Correct. And DeHart Hubbard. But Jesse Owens and Carl Lewis. Amazing. Yeah, so only four in five now in history, and Ngoni is one of those. Incredible yeah. achievement, Ngoni! Wow, I appreciate it. I read yeah. Some stats. I was, I was seriously impressed. Incredible. E oh, except yeah. though, Ngoni, because you couldn't get Cam Levens, you wouldn't even able to sit in the front of the class with Gavin Rennie. So, right, right, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's. Uh, the let's <laughs> If the Bowman, if the Bowman committee is watching this, they are going to revoke my Bowman card. They, they're they're going to take you... it away. Correct. <laughs> right. Let's let's whip those questions around, boys. And Gorni, you have four questions in front of you. I need you to find your first of two for Gavin, please. Okay. So, in your first debut against New Zealand in Zimbabwe, who else from Zimbabwe enjoyed their debut? Adam Huckle. Adam Huckle. Correct. Right, and Goni, you have a second question for Gavin, please. So in the second test in your debut career, there were two standout performances for Zimbabwe. One for betting, one for bowling, and uh, who were they and for what? Um, okay, I think, I think Adam Huckle in the, in the second test. That's right. Um, I'll, I'll give you one point for that. You owe me one more, Mr. Rennie. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say Grand Flower got a double hundred. Guy Whittle's first and only double hundred. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I knew it was, would have been a double hundred if it was to do Pip um, Huck's 11 wickets. Um, but yeah, sheesh. I mean, yeah. Guy was an incredible batsman. Um, and, and now that you say he was profiled um, in conservation games for um, the little baby rhino that he's busy. Did Raising. you see that? It was good. Eh? Gorni, did you see him with his little uh, Rocky, the baby runner? Yes, I, 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 saw, uh, I saw some pictures on WhatsApp. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, good, yeah. good news is that it sounds like uh, Rocky's doing a little bit better. I know that he was under a little bit of uh, pressure. He was on a drip and whatever. But I think he's doing a lot better now. So uh, we hope that Rocky's doing well. And well done to Guy Whittle for uh, what he's done. Right. So, gents. Uh, separated by only one point. From this side, Mr. Rennie, pick a card. Uh, third, the middle one. You Have you been practicing these? No. You haven't? Could I possibly see, or could Ngoni and I possibly see, Gavin, your finest impression? Oh. A fish eagle flap and call. <laughs> Very good. I, I was hoping at some stage you were going to grab the fish. Oh, yeah. I was going to say. 
Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. Right. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you scored yet. Right. Okay. So Ngoni, for total transparency. I, I hope, I hope I can egg this one out. If I can't, I'm just going to bail out. Just, just run out the door and don't come back. Right. Close the computer and I'm done. Yeah, correct. <laughs> right. From the side, there's four cards left. I'll go with the first one. Ah. You used to hey, coming first. What was your right. mum's totem? Right. What was your mum's totem? Elephant, eh? Elephant, yeah. Okay. So, Ngoni, as if you were running towards the springboard of your long jump when you jumped over eight meters could i probably see your finest rhino run and charge Ooh. <laughs> and run out. that's my that's that's what i have <laughs> not, not a bad effort at all oh sure yeah. Just maybe maybe my, my lucky charm can, can can get me five points here. Ah. Oh, too cute. Too cute. You want to say hi? How old and gone here? Three months. Congratulations. Wow. The COVID baby. Good man. Right. <laughs> we have decided. What say I? That Gavin Rennie, you were close to getting five. And oh. the judges decided that because you didn't put the fish in your mouth, you got oh. four. Right? Oh. And Goni, for your bottle uh -huh. brush nose, uh -huh. you got three. So not bad. However, what that means is that Gavin Rennie wins this encounter by 14 points to 12. Oh, close. So very close, close all the wow. way. Like you said, Ngoni, a photo finish. Gents, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for playing. I hope you've had fun. And congratulations to both of you for, first of all, participating and being uh, such great sports. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Ngoni, all the best for you in, uh, in America. We uh, hope that you keep yourself safe. Congratulations on your little COVID baby. Um, uh -huh. and, and we hope that we see you back in Zimbabwe at some stage to come and actually to come and show your little one uh, how fantastic Africa is. We hope that you're going to do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I, I stop by Gavin's uh, place to, for, for this one to lend some Shona. Good man. Good man. <laughs> Gav, yeah. as always, an absolute pleasure to see you again. Glad to see that you're safe as well in Arari and keeping yourself warm. Um, nice fish eagle. Did you cut that, that uh, fish out yourself? Uh, my, my son Campbell helped me out with a few props, actually. And uh, that was a little, his little hand that popped in the screen there. Um, <laughs> well done, Campbell. Gents, absolute pleasure. Confirmation that Gavin Rennie uh, wins 14 points to 12. Gavin Rennie from the Buffaloes and Ngoni uh, Makusha from the Leopards. Great to have them on the show. Those of you that have been watching, go to www.zambesia.com. Go and have a look at what's going on. Uh, lots of information there. The more, most important thing is awareness to ensure that we save the animals for our future generations. And as you can see there, Ngoni doing fantastic work. There's a future generation African there for us who hopefully one day will be back on uh, the home continent and enjoying the animals that our forefathers have enjoyed and that we can continue that. Uh, thank you for watching. There's a couple of games left. Uh, the leaderboard's getting tight. So uh, have a look at that and let's see uh, who's going to take it at the end. But for now, we're done. Thank you for joining us. It's goodbye from us and the Conservation Games.